Hi everyone and welcome along to Sonic Academy. In this first look uh, video we're going to take a look at the brand new version of Diva 1.3. Sat beside me here is the uh, man with the keys, uh, Phil Johnson. And what beautiful keys they are. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to take a, a look at um, some of the new stuff in Diva and we'll just take a general overview as well, just to sort of, for anyone who hasn't had a, had a go in the demo or doesn't know anything about it. Um, so Diva is... Uh, as true a replication of an analog synth as you're about to, you're going to get as you're going to get, I would say um, it's it's circuit modelled as far as I can tell, um, and from what uh, has been written about it, um, and it models a variety of different sections of analog synth. So we'll just sort of quickly go through um, and give you a rough overview of what those are. So we've got the triple VCO and That's the ladder filter. And so if you wing all this together... That becomes a, a Moog. A mini Moog, yeah. Mini -moog. Um, and then we can go down. We've got a dual VCO. So you'd find this on Roland Synths, Roland Analog, Jupiter, Jupiter 8, Jupiter yeah. 6, um, and maybe Juno 60. Um, and then we have the Cascade filter. So this is the 12 dB or 24 dB out of a Juno, I think. And we've got rough and clean, and then you can change your ADSRs as well. So graphically, it looks very like the old Roland models as well, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, the, 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 I suppose the weird thing is that I had 106s and stuff. They weren't known for their fatness. You know, they weren't... Yeah, I mean they do just they do, they are always are those classic sounds where there was the sort of you know, they, they the, were great the pulse for yeah. bass, bass sound from the Junos. They, they had much more bite than the the Moog. They were you know Moog was sort of big and subby and fat and the, the yeah. Roland had a different palette. And then so you've got the DCO, which is um, I'm the guessing Alpha, alpha Juno. Yeah. And let me see. You can sort of tell by the colors if we're getting the stuff right um so yeah i'm, I'm not 100 percent sure the dco I suppose maybe the alpha had a multi-mode filter but i remember the jupiter does it not have a multi-mode as well i'm not too sure on um, that. and then jill vcu eco this is a we think is a ms20 yeah with the bite and so it's got probably a little bit more... Yeah, the, the filter on it was very aggressive, wasn't it? Yeah. It had sort of very... And then the new addition is the digital oscillator. Um, and this is a, a synth that myself and Phil know very, very well. Which is yeah, the... Yeah, got, got one beside us. <laughs> a JP8000 or JP8080, if it's a rack mount. Yeah, um... And there's the UB filter, which we think is an OBX, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Oberheim X. Oberheim OBX. Um, so these are the two new um, elements that are released in this version. Also new in this version, we have an ARP. With, um, some nice features. you got Leap, which from what I've read is... Um, a special arpeggiator feature found on some rare uh, monophonic synthesizers. Okay, well, right. It says on at, at first look, I thought the ARP actually was based on the JP8000. Just jump over a note or something. Uh, I have recently watched, there was a, a beta version, some guy did a... a comparison test between the digital oscillator and a jp8000 yeah i mean it sounds sounds spot on to my ears yeah and let's just sort of go in and we'll um we'll have a listen a bit more closely so the jp it's uh, a, a one plus six uh oscillator so you've got a cent center central saw right and then i think you've got six three on each side Wider yeah, voices. spread voices. Um, so the multi, as far as controls the level of those wide okay. voices. So you've right. got your yeah, yeah. multi is bring it up. And there 
was always a bit of a always a bit of alias in, in the JP at thousand which sort of added its character it was a nice yeah. bite to it and stuff like that so yeah, I'll take off some of the effects here you can hear it clean if you don't want that sort of alias and sound which I, I quite like um, you've got the I mean, this this is the synth that the El Nino riff stuff came from. That's the <laughs> yeah, I used the, nothing but the JP at eighty for a good five years. Yeah, and you it know. was a brilliantly easy, versatile synth. Yeah, because at the time there was it was there was that the Nord, the mm-hmm. Varus hadn't come out just no, it was then. Virus. Um, and it was really the only way to get into big super souls without having a jupiter raid in unison yeah. mode or i mean the, the nord didn't even have any sort of no super soul super stuff souls. no it was no. like just three bc and you had the ability to save patches like you, you know and stuff and uh the filters were all right on it uh the the only other thing that we've been playing about with here is the it doesn't replicate the JP8000 filter, but if no, the well old Roland think, filter... Yeah, we think that the JP8000 filter is probably modelled on the Jupiter anyway, yeah, so, yeah, so it's, it's, you know, you're probably getting a better... Getting a better filter? Yeah. I mean, we'll have to say that the filters in, in this are stunning. Really yeah, happy. absolutely epic. But they come at a price... Yeah, they sure do, you know. So you've got um a chord. A four note chord. You're hitting thirty three and that's with the filters on fast. If I go to divine you're hitting sixty. So it's probably usable for a lead synth. Mm-hmm. But you wouldn't want to be having sixteen <laughs> instances and using it for every well, well, unless you you know you bounce it down or whatever. Um, but there's no question over the quality of the sounds of this. You know, no, the, that's, the that's what you've got to trade off is is the sound quality over. You know, you have one instance that you're going to bounce off, and I kind of was thinking last night when well, it might be interesting to. Because it's so CPU heavy, you might print stuff, and that might be a good discipline. Yeah, well, I mean, I suppose the way to look at it is if you had a real Juno, you had a real mm-hmm. Jupiter, you're not going to have 16 instances of them either, you know? So, yeah. I mean, it, it actually probably does closely model the working procedure of, a, that of an actual actually have, yeah, as yeah. well, you know? Uh, the, let's talk briefly about the ADSR, the uh, sort of uh, envelopes. Yeah, so we've got three different types. You've got the um, attack to case sustain from the Moog. Moog. Um, then the you've got release. an analog, which looks similar to Jupiter Juno type one. And then a digital one, which has um, Q mode, which um, seems to speed it up a bit on the front. So maybe you get a bit of a curve just on the... Attack, attack or on the, on the decay you felt they still weren't snappy enough you felt that you know for those real yeah i think the attack tags. is just a bit slow maybe or maybe the decay i'm not totally sure it just doesn't have that sort of punch you can if you go in for example just pick a, a dual vc which is a simple saw you can go in and in your trimmers uh-huh. um have osc reset okay so uh, we call it retrig on Anna, Anna yeah. um, and it just basically retriggers the OS from the start, which is a very unanalog thing to do, you know. But it gives you that bite at the top. Yeah, so it's, it's resetting the. Just get the sustain down. setting that every time which gives you you know if you're wanting to create pluckier sounds it's giving you that i'll put it back into you know the other thing as well um divine great and fast i don't see you know you could because you can set it on your offline to bounce down mm-hmm. at full mm-hmm. you know if you're working on it you might as well work in fast because the difference isn't a that huge amount yeah, you know yeah. <laughs> You can sort of get those more digital plucky sounds using that. 
know, you can see the, the CPU is probably sitting around 25. Yeah, when it's dead on, you could definitely use that. Um, and just the ability to mix and match all the modules. Um, what other new stuff they had? The ARP, the... Oh, they have brought AAX uh, yep. compatibility to, which is, you know, seems to be more and more companies now are, are bringing that online. Yep. Uh, yeah. So And the digital filter, or the digital oscillator, has more modes, so it doesn't just replicate the super soft from the JP. The JP also had the triangle mod, the noise, and a feedback... Um, These have a few more so oscillators. Yeah, with. so I'm not sure. There's the tri warp. I'm guessing that's the triangle mode. There's noise and feedback, and then this is pulse. I'm guessing this is something similar to the triangle one, but with pulse. Yeah, digital pulse wave thing. Yeah. sort of sonic options there you know the previous version it was all sort of just pure analog stuff so i think this definitely opens it up to a lot more sound possibilities and it's it's a synth i've been really interested in uh it's it's massive it's so power hungry you know anything other than the sort of top mac or fastest windows won't run it but it is you know every a lot of the major synths are there at your fingertips. Yeah. And there's been a lot of... You can see the time and effort this went into, you know, modeling these filters and uh, waveforms. Yes, yeah, so that's the Oberheim filter, we think. Different. Uh, so and the other, I think the other thing in the, the download, there's a bunch of new patches as well. Yeah, uh, a ton of new presets, um, which we haven't really opened up and had a look at. Uh, price is, I think, 179 dollars plus VAT. So, what's that? Yeah. 130 quid. Yeah, and I mean, I think the takeaway for me is it just does sound like analog synths. Yeah. So, guys, yeah, that's it. that's an overview of Diva. Really good, solid update that probably deserved a. 2.0 rather than a 1.3 but uh yeah if you really like you want analog emulations go on uh put it in your arsenal but uh don't expect to have any more than one perhaps two of them unless you got that new computer we got with the f4930 k chips in it is it but that how many instances will that run well i think the different i think it's got 12 cores so i right. think you'd probably get a few okay well that's how it's going so go out and buy a thousand pound computer and and you can run diva quite happily guys thanks for watching and we'll see you all very soon cheers bye